but I think it's time to move on to the second one, uh, so, which is lung cancer. So most of this is going to be about um, smoking, of course, because that's the major cause of smoking. So if we can play video three and stop yep. after a minute. Fortunately, this is all text. So risk factors are tobacco, tobacco smoke, and radon exposure, and asbestos exposure. Arsenic in drinking water is a risk factor, which is an interesting one, I guess it depends on your geology. Past exposure to radiation therapy and family history, so there is a genetic factor. Symptoms are persist persistent cough shortness, cough, shortness of breath, chest pain, unexpected weight loss, which was surprising to me. The treatment means surgical removal, I've got a friend going through this at the moment, and chemotherapy afterwards to kill cancer cells and radiation therapy. about it for that one it's just a short video yeah i got a mate who's um he's just had surgery he's in his 70s uh he was a sailor so the culture was that he they everyone smoked on the on the ship in fact he was on the voyager with you know the voyager disaster in the vietnam war in the 60s or 70s oh, whichever it was the voyager yeah. crashed into hmas melbourne and yep. sank i think it was uh so it was like a friendly fire incident only between ships and uh, and collision and anyway his culture the culture of being on the navy at that time is everyone smoked so um mm. he he smoked and he smoked all his life and uh last year or earlier this year actually i think it was um he had 25 percent of his lungs removed so he has trouble walking up hills and things now because he just doesn't have as much lungs lungs as he used to be used to have and at his age he's basically um his prognosis isn't good long term um, but you know, he's, he can function again now. Uh, he's on chemo, of course, uh, cause whenever you have that sort of, uh, significant, uh, surgery due to, to cancer, they want to give you chemo to, you know, reduce the spread of any other cancer that might be secondary. Um, and yeah, he's not, he's quite healthy right now. Um, but you know that at some point he's not going to be, um, and yeah, so the next video if you need any more encouragement than that to stop you smoking, have a look at this. So when the normal lung expands, you can see that air moves in and out of it freely. The lung opens. And you can see that a normal lung operates this way. This is a lung that we've exposed to cigarette smoke. And, and so you can... Say pause, sorry. There you? Yep, yep. I didn't want to talk over the video. I'm not oh. hearing the video though. Oh, okay, yep. You can actually sorry, feel it. Pause. There's a tumor here that somebody can feel if they want. It's very hard. It's much harder to expand. And that's why people that smoke, especially for a long time, has real difficulty breathing and getting air. Wow. Yeah, it just didn't look like it was full full stream, full oh, screen on sorry, the screen. Yeah. Sorry, I, yeah. it was for half of that. The second bit was on the screen up behind you. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. So sorry, I'm uh, I think most people can... Even though it's small, I think most people can see the difference between the healthy lung and the smoking lung. Definitely. Um, that's what you're breathing through if you've been a heavy smoker, and that's what my friend had, you know, a fair chunk removed of. Um, yeah, Dr. Chuck's saying he lost a friend of throat cancer, ex-Navy, helicopter pilot, smoker. So persistent hoarseness over three weeks needs checking. Not sure what the last bit means. Um, oh, <laughs> Daryl M's eating dinner. Sorry about that, Daryl. Yeah, people smoke regardless. It's an addiction, of course, um, but there are ways of treating addiction, and uh, I thoroughly recommend you going and seeing your doctor uh, to see the best way to get rid of it. So, oh, um, good advice from Dr. Chuck. With most cancers, by the time you have symptoms, it is far advanced. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, get yourself checked regularly. That's that's my message for tonight. Um, it's, it's not just for men. It's for women as well. Uh, you need to 
have set up regular blood tests at the very least, and that picks up a hell of a lot of things. Um, and and in Australia, at least on uh, Medicare, you can get those for free, basically. So yeah, um, get yourself checked if you haven't already. Men are a bit lazy when they get when it comes to the doctor. Uh, we tend to be focused on work and family and other things, so we don't go to the doctor so often. We think, oh, I feel all right, so obviously there's nothing wrong with me. That doesn't mean you shouldn't maintain it. I mean, you take your car to get service once in a while, don't you? Because you don't want to pay a whole lot of money later on to fix fix something that's gone wrong because you didn't service it. Um, so, yeah, get do the same with your body. Oh, and John Rapp's in the in the chat. Everyone give John Rapp the appropriate salute. <laughs> the John Rapp salute. Middle finger. We don't have the, uh, the bugle one. <laughs> no. no, I've got it. I have to actually re-download that from oh, Arwen. I've been having to set everything back up, unfortunately. Files that were Sorry, well, Lord, once were have to be reloaded. Oh, nothing. It wasn't important. All good. Well, you're supposed to be contributing. Just say something. I <laughs> know. Oh, I, was, I was wondering what the salute was, and it's just a bird. All right. Yep. Yeah. Bird. Well, John, on... Um, Team Skeptic's channel, John Rapp once was a moderator and he put his phone in his pocket and he was like uh, banning people accidentally. So uh, it, it's become tradition to give him the middle finger whenever he shows up. But I do want to read out what he posted. He says he's a 57 year old male that smokes and mainlines coffee but doesn't drink. He never gets sick, hasn't been to a doctor for other than injuries for 30 odd years. And here you are making me face up. Well, mate. Go and get your blood tests. I'm about the same age as you, and uh, I'm picking up things because I'm going to the doctor. You might as well go and make sure that uh, you're not going to have a miserable life later on. I'm sure there are people who love you, mate, and they want you to be around. So, you know, make sure that you're around as well and just go to the doctor. It doesn't take long. And it's free under Medicare. All right, so Dr. Chuck says, best advice, general awareness of your body, unexpected weight loss, night sweats, new indigestion, change in bowels, especially to looser. Don't ignore it. Oh, golden skeptic, I'm not going to read out yours. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Uh, where were we up to? Um, So we're on lung cancer, uh, but uh, a lot of people would be thinking, well, okay, what's smoking pot like? Uh, It's becoming more and more legal in places around the world. Uh, So it's probably worthwhile knowing about that. Uh, So let's have a look at the video number five, please, Cypher. There are at least 33 carcinogens in marijuana smoke, such as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which are products of combustion found in grilled meat and flowing through the bodies of those who smoke marijuana, similar to what one sees flowing through the bodies of cigarette smokers. That's really remarkable. Most tobacco users inhale way more smoke into their lungs over the course of a day. So on a puff-by-puff basis, is marijuana smoke really that much worse? Well, it does seem to contain more benzopyrene and benzanthracene, which are polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon procarcinogens, compared to unfiltered cigarette smoke. But it may just be that cannabis users inhale more deeply and then hold the smoke in longer, which can end up depositing four times more tar in the lungs, amplifying exposure to these carcinogens. And unfortunately, bubbling the smoke through water, like in a bong, does not appear to reduce the risks of tar buildup. Yeah, marijuana smoke tar may have similar tumor-promoting effects as cigarette smoke in mice, but what about in men and women? Long-time marijuana users do have more cancer, more lung cancer, more oral cancer, voice box cancer, but only, it seems, because they also tend to be more likely to also smoke tobacco. After cigarettes are taken out of the equation, no increased risk was found. Same with head and neck cancer. Uh, One study found increased risk, but five studies reported no association, and one study found decreased risk. So yeah, regular use causes airway injury that can lead to chronic bronchitis, but no evidence of long-term lung damage like emphysema, and despite the presence of carcinogenic components, no apparent increased risk of lung cancer, though evidence is mixed regarding the risk of heavy long-term use, and that may be the crux. 
In terms of smoke exposure, even smoking a joint every day for 10 years may only translate to six months of pack-a-day cigarette smoking. In most studies on tobacco smoking and lung cancer, six months in a lifetime uh, might get you classified as a never smoker. It may take a couple years of cigarette smoking to significantly bump lung cancer risk, and so that would be like smoking a joint every day of your adult life. No wonder we can't find a lung cancer link with casual marijuana use, though there is an alternative explanation. Maybe the anti-tumor effects of the cannabis plant is counteracting the tumor-promoting effects of the carcinogens in the smoke. Wait, anti-tumor effects? Yes. In fact, the original demonstration of an anti-cancer effect, dating back to 1975, was against lung cancer cells, showing that THC can suppress their growth in a Petri dish. This kind of data has led to wild claims of cancer cures on the Internet, extrapolating the results of this preclinical work, meaning like in petri dishes and test tubes, to humans without any basis in fact, as cannabis, according to this 2016 review, has not been studied clinically as a treatment for malignancy in people. But that's not really true. There was a pilot study performed on terminal brain cancer patients. We'll find out what they found next. All right then, it's a bit hard when you're watching this stream. So that seemed to quote a lot of uh, papers, scholarly papers. I'm hoping Dr. Chuck can tell us where uh, things were wrong there. Uh, I thought it was interesting though, because you know I know a lot of people take marijuana, especially in places where it's legal, um, and especially for pain. Uh, when they're older, they, they take it for pain in particular, mm -hmm. uh, because you have more pain when you're older, I know from experience. Uh, and I thought it was interesting there that uh, the risk of um, cancer as a result of smoking pot was uh, mainly due to the fact that they also smoked tobacco. So you know, the pot didn't seem to add to the risk, although uh, they didn't. They also said that there weren't a lot of uh, um, story, a lot of research into whether only smoking pot would give you cancer or not. I'd imagine it would simply because burning anything gives you carcinogens. So. Um, but anyway, so uh, I thought. I also think, uh, I mean, there's a big movement to legalize the use of marijuana uh, for you know um, recreational use, um, and that's certainly what's happening around the world. A lot of states in the U.S. have gone that way, um, and you know I think it should be tried. But what bothers me is that people who get high on marijuana go out. If they stayed at home. Not so much of a problem. I don't really want to share the roads with people who are high, though. It's something that uh, we really shouldn't do. Indeed. And yet people still... I mean, well, people do everything when they've been... People well, people do that with alcohol do as well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's yeah. not just the... People do prescription drugs and still drive, and that's one thing that they don't actually test for when they're doing the drug test is the prescription drugs that people take a lot of too. So yeah. that's a somewhat lot of those interesting. Are exactly, and so that's yeah. I, I think that maybe needs a, a expanding. But then when they do that, then you're going to be getting people that you know have taken something the night before. It's still going to be in their system, but you know far less active. Um, some people are on sleeping tablets and whatnot. So yeah, it's. Getting that right uh, is a really fine thing to fine-tune when you think about it. I also think um, things like marijuana, uh, they're not... I mean, I know that's when people when, who are young are the ones who try it for the first time, but that's when you shouldn't do it because you've got your whole life ahead of you and it's too easy to fall into that drug lifestyle where you're no use to anyone and you ruin your whole life as a result. Um, as I'm getting older, and of course as pain becomes more regular, uh, I'm, I'm more open to it. I'm, I'm thinking, yes, if that helps me, then I'd, I'd consider it. I have, I've never done it, um, and I wouldn't know how to go about it, but it seems to be becoming uh, more and more legal, and as it becomes legal, I guess I'll get uh, ways of doing it. Um, but but if you're young, I, I, mean, I had a friend who was got hooked on heroin when he was in his 20s, and 
he uh, utterly ruined his life as a result. He managed to survive because most people don't. Um, and but his life was never the same as a result. Mm, so that's sad. Uh, yeah. So that's so in Oregon with the last election, they legalized some hard drugs there, and I'm actually for that in that situation because if you got something like that, you should test it in a small scale. And a state seem a state of America at least seems like a reasonably small scale for that to happen. And if there's a whole lot of problems that come out as a result of it, then everyone else won't do it. But if it works, then everyone else should do it. You know, if you get an advantage of it, a net advantage anyway, um, then you should do it. And if you get a net disbenefit, I guess is the term, then you shouldn't do it. But unless you test it, you've got no way of knowing. So Indeed. anyway, that's just my view on these things. So there's nothing left to do but cue the corgi. You're despicable.